Fresh here with the lovely and talented Felicia. Hi. It took me a while to figure out what your name was. And today we're going to talk about the craft cutting machine showdown. Never been done before. So the most frequent question you get in your classes when you're out talking to people about these crafting cutting machines, what's the question you get? Which machine should I start with? What machine should I buy? That's a hard question to answer, isn't it's it? It's a very hard question to answer. So what would you recommend? And one, it depends on what you're looking to do with the machine. But if you are somebody who's looking to grow with your, your machine, maybe you want to start a business or really get into your hobbies and really make unique things, mm -hmm. then you might want to consider one of these, these yeah. bigger machines. These kind of professional, almost under professional, right under professional level right. home hobby and machines. Right. So you wouldn't recommend a small one like a Cricut Joy or something? Why I not? wouldn't recommend the Cricut Joy because it only cuts four and a half inches wide and it doesn't do things like print and cut because making stickers is a big thing. It doesn't do those wider format things. Joy Bigger Extra material. does print and cut. Yeah, the Joy Extra does do print and cut, but it too is still limited to the amount of width and the, the thickness of materials that you can cut. So the price so, delta between the, one of the smaller machines? The price delta from the Cricut Joy Extra to one of the bigger machines, we're talking very little difference in some of these machines. So today we're going to talk about the six most popular consumer machines. And what are they, Felicia? We've got the Cricut Maker 3, mm -hmm. the Brother Scan and Cut SDX 230Di, the Silhouette Cameo 5, the Caesar Juliet, and the Locklet Crafter. And? Oh, almost forgot. The X Tool M1, she's down in the laser room. Why does one person need six cutting machines, Felicia? Why not? I mean, how could I do this comparison if I haven't used or touched all these machines at some point? I actually made her get all these and we bought all these because this comparison is really, it's an important question because there's so many different ones out there and people are like, I don't know what to get. That's right. And we bought all of these machines except for the X Tool M1 on our own with our own money. We did not. We're not, we're not sponsored by any of these not, companies not whatsoever. These. The X Tool M1 is different. And X Tool did tell us we want your completely honest That's opinion. Right. You're like, don't That's cut right. any corners here. Don't make up That's anything. Right. Just tell us exactly That's what right. you think. So it's great. This is really, it's a really fair comparison. So again, no one else has ever done this comparison before at this level. They might compare two machines, but never six at one time. So <laughs> this is quite an undertaking. I haven't seen you for about a week. How long did this take? This took us a week to do on probably a good maybe 30 to 40 hours worth of work. That's why I couldn't remember your name anymore. So <laughs> what was your biggest challenge when doing this comparison? Each one of these machines uses its own software. Mm -hmm. So I had to know how to use the software on all the machines and, and then how what about to, this? <laughs> and then how to adjust pressure, speed, force and adjust blade settings. I mean Without spoiling, you really don't have to do this with Cricut, do you? You don't have to. I'm, I'm most familiar with the Cricut Maker 3. Yeah. It was, or the Cricut Maker was my original machine, yeah. so I'm most familiar with that. And you do not have to adjust how much of the blade actually comes out at the end of the housing. I found that nuts, so too, going that, through. Or like trying to, that threw me off. That threw me off. We had to watch videos, other people's videos, and the we manufacturer's did. videos to figure out how to do Like, why would you need to do this? Because you've never done this before. Never done this before. It was so weird, right? Like, yeah. what? This is dangerous. Yeah. We didn't want to mess with that and little this came blade. out of the silhouette. Or the Caesar Juliet. I have to ask you this question because I heard more profanity coming from this room than I've ever heard before. <laughs> how much material? I know you hate to waste material. About how much? Give me I a ballpark. How much material did you waste? Because you had to learn all this stuff and try we it. We wasted countless sheets of cardstock and this um, magnetic sheets, 30 mil magnetic Two sheets bucks and piece. vinyl, a, a whole roll of <laughs> brand new roll of HTV vinyl that we used to do this. So we're talking. I don't know, eighty to a hundred dollars yeah. worth of material oh, yeah. that At I had least. to waste, and it drove me nuts to yeah. do that because yeah. I don't like wasting stuff. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, we got through <laughs> it, and I'm proud of you for doing it. I'm really actually proud of it. I'm sure these people are going to find this very interesting. So, look, we don't know everything. Obviously, we're just walking into a lot of these machines, used them for the first time. That's right. So, if you're a specialist, if you know these machines like the back of your hand, hey, what's that? I never saw that before. <laughs> Definitely comment below and let us know if there's something we should have done differently right. or a different setting we should try. That's right. You know, we all work better together as a team. That's you know? right. And if and if there are some significant comments, then maybe we'll do a, a redo. But you know, this our first take of what we've done with these machines. I think is is good. In our blog post at freshandfelicia.com, there'll be a link in the comments. We'll give you full details, the test parameters, and everything that we did That's in right. this thing. Everything's That's right. on freshandfelicia.com. Look for our crafting section. All right. So, what categories did we test these six machines in? The first category was the ease of use of the machine as well as the software. You know, Meaning how, that if you're a beginner, you walk in, open the box, what happens? 
can you use it straight out of the box? Is okay. the software intuitive enough that you can make your first cut without too much frustration? All right, so that was category one, ease of use. That's the machine and the software. How about category number two? Intricate cardstock. We wanted to see just how small each one of these machines could cut with details. So we did mm -hmm. a 1.5 inch butterfly all the way up to 2.5 mm -hmm. inches, all three of those. And um, to see who could do what. The reason we did that, because Caesar said they can cut down to 0 0.01 millimeter in accuracy. That's right. And it didn't specify whether that was vinyl or cardstock. Right. The third was a um, HTV project where we used um, a frilly font. Yeah. A nice tail in the beginning and the end, and nice real thin lines to see how well each one would perform. How about the fourth test? Print and cut. How well did each machine perform with print and cut and get you the nice border around the edges? Well, people want to make stickers and magnets, right? That's right. And cruise magnets. That's right. right. And number five, one of my favorite tests. Which machine can cut 30 mil? Um, this is a, a Marietta sheet. magnet. She is right. 30 mil. It's 0.76 millimeters. One of the thickest things you can cut right. outside of wood or acrylic. Right. It is flexible. But uh, the reason we're using this thickness instead of 20 or some of the magnets that some of the uh, crafting companies produce is they don't stick on doors as well. But right. this thing will stick on anything. And you want something that would stick to a cruise door well. That's right. And that thing, that's the way to go. That's right. All right, so those are the five categories we rated these machines in. And well, let's get started. Let's show everyone how these machines did. Let's do it.
Okay, we started with the Cricut Maker because that's the one you're most familiar with, right? Right, we started out with the Cricut Maker. Um, we started personally out with the original Cricut Maker and this is the Cricut Maker 3 and it was just the easiest one for us to start with, get our get our groove going as we started these testing. And how'd she do? She did great. You can see this is the HTV that it cut um, perfectly. Those thin lines all the way through here are just on point. No mm -hmm. problems whatsoever Looks great. cutting that. That's great. And then we cut the, um, the magnet, mm -hmm. it is a magnet sticks there and it cut perfectly all the way around no problems I did calibrate the machine before I started okay okay and then it cut our butterflies flawlessly. this is pretty intricate detail for a, a blade cutter they are if you can see that really well yeah. look at this tiny this is 1.5 it cut it perfectly and it cut it with that Cricut intricate cut setting all right so there's a specific setting for there that. is a specific setting I hadn't seen it before I had read about it and I went ahead and tried it and one shot this is it I got it perfect all of these are that's, one shot that's impressive yes so 1.5 2 inch and uh, 2.5 all right how did it do in its star rankings it did 4.8 and the only reason it didn't get five is because um, from a software standpoint, the software is sometimes flaky and we were out frustrated with it for, it was down for about 15 minutes for us one day. Mm. And that was probably the only issue, the only reason it didn't get five is really because of the software. Okay, that's good. So overall, the ranking again? 4.8. And I'll have the ranking for each of one of the categories on the screen here. So the Silhouette Cameo 5, we gave an overall ranking of 2.8. Mm, ouch. When it, when it came to the HTV, it cut just fine. Yeah. No problems. Okay. Um, they it, all pretty much specialize in HTV, right? They do. And when, when it came to the cardstock, we had a real hard time trying to get the right setting to be able to cut this. Oh, yeah. That so was we did it gnarly. three different times. Like well, ripped. probably more than three. Um, but these are the ream, three that I saved. <laughs> a ream of cardstock went through here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I think this might have been the most profanities of yeah. this thing. I'm not sure what's going yeah. on. So, so I heard a lot of great things about the cameo. Part. I have two. I have two. And you can see I even have the uh, the knife blade in here as well, trying because we were doing all kinds of test cuts with the magnet, trying oh, to get boy. the magnet to cut properly. Oh, yeah. And it was a, it was a struggle. It was a struggle to get this to work. Um, but but we did. Um, it looks red, a little rough around the edges. It is here. a little rough around yeah. the edges. All right. And what so was again, the total this, score on this? Total score was two point eight. All right, so this is the Brother Scan and Cut SDX 230DI, and we gave this one an overall 3.6. You can see it cut the HTV just fine, no problems there. Yeah, it looks great. It cut the magnet just fine. Well, this is different. It wasn't print yeah, and cut. It wasn't a print and cut. It was a scan and cut. Okay. And we used that scan and cut feature um, with this machine because the print and cut functionality is something apparently you have to purchase, and I wasn't willing to go but that far. you don't far. need it with you the scan and that. cut. It's perfect. That's right. Look at that magnet. That's Show right. that to you right sure. up in the camera. It looks perfect. And we did that. that all with the onboard screen. I could sell this. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. There's like no rough edges around it whatsoever. Very That's nice. Right. And then um, we did the butterflies, and we didn't have much success there. Ooh, yeah, these didn't are the do ones well. we saved, and you can see it just didn't work out for us. Not great. No. So um, overall, we gave it a three point six. That's pretty good. Cardstock's not so good, yeah. and in the software, a little wonky, but we were able to get it to work fine. All right. So the here's the Locklet Crafter again. HTV cut fine no problems with that well this is Seen made it. specifically for hd it is made, it? yep it is yeah it did is. a nice job on that all right and um the cards <laughs> oh card stock, what's this what's going just, on here we just couldn't get it right mm -hmm. you know we adjusted the settings all which ways and we just we just couldn't get it to work right and again if you know settings for any of these machines that we should try let us know in the comments for sure and then this is our magnet. We did successfully get it to cut through the magnet, but the... Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, we had some issues with the um, calibration, mm. um, but we were able to resolve that sl slightly. But, you know, um, so oh, overall... That's in trouble. Yeah, overall, I gave this one a 2.6. I think that... I think it, it needs some... It needs some work. I think their software, they're working on a version 2.0, so they may have some they big are. improvements coming later Absolutely, this year. Absolutely, and that's, that is a really good point, and we might want to revisit this at that point. So this is the Caesar Juliet, which we just purchased, and um, we were able to get it cut, the um, HTV, just nicely. It looks good, yeah. Looks Again, good, this right? was made specifically because Caesar is a big manufacturer in HTV. That's right. When it came to cardstock... Cardstock, yeah. We just couldn't get it right. Yeah. We were able to get it to cut out, but it started ripping. And some of the backing, when you look at the cuts of the intricate cuts of the butterfly, are not fully cut through. 
To be honest, so. this is the machine that promises 0 0.01 millimeter in accuracy. And on their website, they don't specify whether that's vinyl or cardstock. I expected great things from this machine. I made you do it about 40 times. Oh my gosh, it was just And it just it didn't, it wouldn't work. We just couldn't get the right cut. We couldn't get that level of detail. And this the, is the machine where you had to adjust the blade. How much of the blade was exposed to be able to get this? And we, we adjusted this. There's no numbers here. It's very subjective, I guess, in how much you expose. But this, this was different and new. Um, Cameo so has an adjustable blade too, doesn't it? It does. It's but got, it has numbers on yes, it? Yes, it's got, yes. An it auto does. blade kind yes. of thing? And then print and cut with the magnet was fine. Well, no problems. Mm, a little rough around the side, but I'll give them a pass on that one. So overall, we gave the Caesar Juliet 3.6. All right, so the X-Tool M1, we did the um, HTV cut with the uh, blade. Oh. And it struggled a little bit. You can see it didn't really quite get those fine lines in there. Um, and then we also did the magnet. It print and cut stickers very well. Mm -hmm. And we put it on the magnet. We struggled a little bit. It would not cut. The blade would not cut through the magnet. But and what did you do? No way to set that. There's no way to adjust the blade There was no the way to do that, no. All right, so uh, they tell you never to do this, but and you should never try this as well, but I use the laser to cut the magnet. And the reason you shouldn't do that is we don't know what's in those magnets. We did reach out to Marietta Magnets. We haven't heard back from them. There's a possibility that there is a vinyl or a PVC substance in that magnet. That's right. And if you hit that or burn that, it can create some noxious or, noxious or even toxic fumes. That's right. So you never want to do that. But I wanted to see if it works. And a lot of people say, well, if you do that, it's going to create a disastrous mess with particles of magnets all over the place. But I didn't really see it. I see more magnet chunks on this right. than I did in the machine. And right. I checked the, the laser very, very well after we did this. I thing. probably would not do this. It yeah. does give you burn marks on the side. And did it? Yeah, we'll leave soot, so yeah. to speak. So I, I probably wouldn't do this for... The accuracy seemed the to accuracy be on point. The accuracy was good, and the print and cut feature is, is on point. Okay. So then we used the blade mm -hmm. to try to cut our cardstock. Nah. And although you can see it's got great detail, it didn't cut all the way through. And there's no way to change this setting, huh? There's no way to change the setting. We tried different types of materials that they had in there, and we just couldn't get the blade to work. Yeah. So... I'll move this out of the way. You moved on to plan so B. I you moved on to plan laser. B. I used the laser and I set a piece of cardstock inside the laser and look at the intricate details that it's it cut. It's insane. Here's the one cut on the um, Cricut Maker. Mm -hmm. And look how tiny But you didn't these set are. these to do this this small. Somehow it changed its own setting the first and made time, them smaller. The first time I did it, it so I don't know what I did that made it change. You didn't do it anything. Smaller. You did it by itself. But um, look how, look, these two butterflies right here are the same butterfly. And look at the intricate detail That's amazing. of this. Right? It's almost like the machine was saying, all right, I got your challenge. I'm going to do it even smaller. Right. Like it did that by itself. But look at that. That's insane level of detail in here. Look how thin that is. And it's perfect. That's right. And no weeding. No weeding. How about that? So the X tool performing admirably, except surprisingly with heat transfer vinyl. Yep. All right, Felicia, very enlightening. Some results I would have never expected. Recap for us, what did we say? We scored all six machines on five categories. Okay. And in the end, Cricut Maker 3 came out on top with 4.8 out of 5. Did you expect that? I kind of expected it. I'm, I'm, again, it's the machine I'm most familiar with. It kind of explains why they are the sales leader in these craft and cutting machines. Personally, I find their software the easiest of all and the, the machine. softwares to use. And the machine no blade well. adjustments, right. none of that craziness. Right. And the results show they That's speak right. for themselves. That's right. What was next? X-Tool came in with a 3.8. Was that a shock? It was a bit of a shock. I mean, that laser is so on point. See, that's kind of a, people might say it's an unfair comparison, right. but the tool itself, you have to use any features that it has. I mean, that's right. if Cricut had a laser in it, it would be perfect. That's right. But just because it has a laser and a blade, we used one for whatever it did better. That's right. And that's why I think X-Tool scored so high. 3.8 is pretty admirable. It is. And. What you can do with it, with the laser stuff, we're starting to experiment with. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. What's next? All right. So um, Juliet and Brother came in at a tie at 3.6. Okay. Yep. Still not bad. Not no, bad at all for Juliet okay. and Brother. Who's left her brother? <laughs> Cameo came in at 2.8. Yeah, you know, that really shocked me. I expected Cameo to do a lot better because yeah. they always are talking about their cutting pressure, how powerful that thing is. But for these we tests. Struggle. We struggled. We struggled. Yeah, it didn't really matter. And I was really surprised that it was unable, unable to handle that magnet. Yeah. Uh, 
Or we just couldn't find the right couldn't, settings. Maybe, or so. maybe we couldn't find the right settings. We tried every yeah. which way to Sunday. and We just, wasted a bunch of magnets We did, on and yeah. we just reached a point where we had to call it. And shoring up the rear. It would be Locklick. It's 2.6. I have great hopes for Locklick. I though. do, too. We I, met their CTO in Las we Vegas. We did when we were in CES in Vegas Smart in January. Guy. Um, we shared a lot of information with them, a yeah. lot of things that users um, would like to see in the software, mm -hmm. and a new version 2.0, a big up upgrade, is supposed to come out in June, so I, I have high hopes. He told us the, the, the machine capability is there. Yeah. They just need to tighten it up with the software, for it. and it's a brand new machine for, what, 170 bucks? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's still a great value. I hope you enjoyed this. Please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, comment if you know something that we don't know. Nobody knows everything. And again, we're new at a lot of these machines. So if you're an expert, definitely drop a comment below and let us know what we could try again. And maybe call, do this whole... Would you be mad if I told you to do this whole evaluation again later on with the it's comments gonna, that we get? Maybe later. You're going to take a little breather? I'm going to take a breather from this. I'm not going to spend another week on this one. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy your crafting journey. Thank you.